I had uh, my first really powerful ayahuasca trip um, shortly after that, a, f- a few weeks after that. And I took way too much. Where? Uh, in Mexico. There in was Mexico. A, a shaman that had come up from Peru who had a particularly potent kind of ayahuasca called sky ayahuasca. Sky ayahuasca. And uh, my, I've got a, a guy, a good friend of mine named Arturo in Mexico. And it was one of his contacts that he had worked with many times with a lot of different things, medicines. And so I had this rare opportunity to work with this, this shaman who had this crazy ayahuasca and I, I'm, I'm Mr. Fearless and far, bro. You know, like yeah, I've looked under the, Face your fears. exactly. I've looked under the, under the, the bed. I've seen the monsters. I've, I've tackled my fear of public speaking of heights of all this. Shit. So I'm like, I know, I know my childhood wounds. So I thought, um, and didn't think there was too much that could make me have a bad trip. And I've been able to talk myself out of ba- other bad trips I've had before too. So I went in arrogant, man. That's not a good spot to be in with hallucinogenics. So, um, do you want the abbreviated story or the long story? I want the long story. All right. We got time. All right. So basically, we go to this spot in the jungle in Mexico. And there's a group of 15 of us or so. And um, sun is set. We're sitting around a circle. We have our shaman there. And he's pouring this ayahuasca. It's in a little shot glass, like an ounce, probably like two ounces. And he's got a candle in the middle and a bunch of people that I haven't met, just randoms from all over Mexico. And it was so, so interesting. He, he cracks open this, this bottle that he has the ayahuasca in and he starts saying a prayer to it. So he sh- 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 blows on it and, and says some prayers. Mm-hmm. Immediately, the wind kicks up. <laughs> and I'm like, what the f-? <laughs> Like I travel the world trying to find ghosts and demons and unicorns and devils and like i i'm so down for that but i have a bit of a scientific mind so i want to see proof i can't explain that coincidence maybe but seems like a little bit too much of a coincidence and he blows on it the wind picks up he doesn't even bat an eye it's like that's what normally happens apparently i don't know he reaches over his candle, starts pouring it in the glasses. It looks like a giant tarantula, the, the silhouette of his hand on, on the ceiling of this, of this yurt. And he pours everyone a glass. And so I, I take my shot and everyone goes around. It tastes like the clippings from under a lawnmower, like gasoline and like plants and almost like you scraped it from the bottom. And then the funny thing about these ceremonies is that they happen in the dark, right? If you've done psilocybin before, acid, whatever it is, like generally it's in the day. Right. Um, and if, if like if you have mushrooms, for example, you can go to a dark place, but you can kind of change the channel by focusing on something else. In ayahuasca, you're in the dark, essentially by yourself the whole time. There's people around, um, but you're, you're, it's not a shared experience. It's a very much individual experience. So he blows out the candle and it's dark. 20 minutes goes by, nothing. 25 minutes, nothing. But 30 minutes, I'm not seeing anything, but I hear this like, like the most ominous, like I'm going to vomit my guts out burp I've ever heard. And that's a very common thing. So all of a sudden people start popping off and it's like puking everywhere. And then they, they have instruments and they're like, yeah, da, 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 the medicine is good. Let it you know, relax. And they're singing songs in Spanish in different languages. And I'm there. I'm like, well, I'm not feeling anything. Right. So I'm sitting and I'm sitting and I'm sitting. And then about another 20 minutes goes by. He flicks on the candle again and it's like a zombie apocalypse it's so like one guy standing up looking at the sky people in like puke laying on the ground and i'm like like i'm not feeling anything and there's me and one other guy who are just looking like you know like we missed the experience the shaman invites us up for more so we go and take a second shot me and this guy candle goes back out sit there and then i start to see some visuals so and there's feelings kind of bubbling up joy fear all these things but like breathing through always breathing right breathing through these feelings and I'm feeling like I'm starting to figure out what, what it's like, and I'm feeling a bit comfortable. And so I'm like, I really got to piss. So I'm going to go up, and at this point, you could have as much as you wanted. I'm going to take my third shot, and I'm going to go take a piss outside, and I'm going to come back and just settle into my cocoon. So I go up, take my third shot, wander out the, the door, and into the jungle, and I start taking a piss. And then like the visuals are starting to happen. I see like mandalas, patterns, like zigzags, purple, orange, colors like that. I'm like, all right, I got to piss. But like now it's starting to kick in, and I'm like, no piss is coming out. So I'm there. I'm like, like let's go, let's go, let's go. And then I'm like, I got to puke. And so I take a knee, and I puke, and I puke, and I puke. And I get up, and I have no idea where the f- I am anymore. Just lost in patterns. I look around. I can't see the front door anymore. I'm like, oh, f- 
And so I, I, I know like I went this way and I see like a black thing. I assume it's the door. I, I walk towards it. It's just patterns and I, I can't make it. it. The pattern goes away. I close my eyes and it looks the same. I open my eyes. I think I can't open my eyes, but the reality is I can't tell anymore. And I look down and I see this pile of like wriggling leaves or snakes or something. And I'm like, that's probably not snakes. <laughs> and I just like, lay down and I have a little blanket and I lay there like a little toddler with my little bum bum out of my blanket just like because sh- i'm not I'm, I'm out in the jungle and i'm there and i i'm having this like my heart starts racing 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 and it's patterns but i can still kind of like cling on to reality and then my world starts to, to rumble and my the, the, everything starts to like shake in my vision and i feel like the world th- these patterns just start like ripping open like like this and I feel this absolutely all-encompassing panic fear doesn't even do the word justice like terror like pure primordial pawn scum creationary terror of just I am now lost I am on a speeding train holding on by a pinky and I have no idea what the where this train's going and with the opening of the world I'm there and I feel this presence of something, but this something is, can see everything, like see through me and everything, every cell of my body you can see inside. And I, I feel like I'm, it's almost like this feeling of, let's say the whole world was watching you or something like this, this feeling of being so vulnerable, like the, everything can see you. There's no, violated. nothing you can hide, like a violating <clears throat> intention, a violating view of your entire, everything you've done, everything that's, that's been, it, it sees everything. And then as my heart's pounding and racing and pounding and racing, I feel like what it's doing is it's showing me what the world is, what, what the universe is that it's that what i'm seeing this white light and these patterns exploding everywhere like this is what the the the, the universe is made of and the terror is coming from that this thing is showing me every, the, the minutia of, of of existence and i have no idea what the f- i'm looking at it's like a, a, an earthworm being shown the schematics of a rocket ship the earthworm can't even understand what the paper is, let alone how to f- get to space. Like, I have no idea. I, 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 and so in that, I feel like, <laughs> my heart's like starting to beat right now because I'm, like, I'm, I'm going back there. But in all of that, it's like the, this, this, this p- presence is like, oh, so you wanted to see behind the curtain, eh? <laughs> like, this is what you wanted to do? Have a... F- Look, you know, like this, this is everything. You can't even begin to understand this, you insignificant moat. You are an atom in a grain of sand on an infinite beach. You don't even have the right to look, but here it is. Congratulations, you got what you wanted. And it was horrifying. The same way if, if you'd never seen inside a human body and mm-hmm. someone just tore open a human body in front of you, you'd be like, what the f- but you have to admit it's a little bit fascinating, mm-hmm. like your your bloody heart pumping, your intestines, the, the lungs, be, like it's it's an amazing creation. These these meat suits we have, but it was that kind of feeling where you just you wouldn't even know how it worked, you know, like you don't no idea what I what I saw, and with that I I was having like panic attack after panic attack and having to like breathe breathe through and breathe through and. Luckily, the shaman was very good at what he did, and he he said in the beginning, the more you fight it, the more it'll fight back. Right. And so, again, went back to the breath. No matter how much you're panicking, no matter what's happening in your life, if you can breathe out of these feelings. That's all I had. I didn't even know where I was anymore. So just with the breathing, with the breathing, with the breathing, remembering every trip has an end, every trip has an end. I was there. your eyes open or closed? You know. I couldn't tell. You don't even know. That was the scariest part because I didn't know where I was, lost in the abyss. So I'm there with my little booty hanging out of my blankie, and I remember saying, it's okay, baby, it's okay, baby. Every trip has an end, every trip has an end, baby, it's okay. And then slow, I don't know how long I was there for. Generally an ayahuasca trip is four, four hours, five hours, something, I don't know. Um, If you have like multiple, then it's longer, but generally it's all said and done in about six hours. So 
I was there for maybe an hour or two. And then once I could crawl again, I crawled back inside and, and snuck up into my little, you have a little like pad there and spent the night. But that f***ed me up. That f***ed me long, for a long time. How long does that like super intense feeling of the universe being ripped open, how long does that last? I, again, I can't, you can't tell. But judging by the time where I could, I could come back to reality, I would guess I was probably there for like a, an hour. But after that, it's somewhat manageable. Then, yeah. Then like a general, a general ayahuasca experience, you would, you would be able to mostly control yourself. Like that I had a lot. If you have like a heroic dose, you kind of lose yourself. But if you were to go have one shot or two, even you yeah. wouldn't lose track of reality mm -hmm. generally, depending on your body and your mm -hmm. tolerance. But dude, that, that me up for months. Really? Yeah. Oh, how I, so? I missed one important thing there. Yeah. What so we started the story with the skull is in the presence of that God is what it was. I felt that I was so insignificant that the only thing I could ever possibly do with my life is just give myself to this thing. I have no other gift to give. I can't give money, can't give any possessions. The only gift I can give as a human being to whatever that was, was my life. And then I got how human sacrifice could be a thing. Because what we looked at the crystal skull, those people all would have been on some high level hallucinogens. So if you're meeting God and you do feel like you have to help your entire culture, your people, your, your Mayan brothers, whatever, you could sacrifice and not in like a suicidal sort of way, but like in a self-righteous, like I, the only gift I can give is, is, is my life. And it, it kind of me a little bit because once you see that, you can't, once you feel that even, you can't unfeel that. Like, what was that? Does it exist? This is the question about psychedelics that I always want to know. Does that always exist or is our brain just painting it on? Right. Yeah, that's a good question. Is that something that's always there and that just uh, like our brains are filters that are filtering out that world so we can survive and eat and reproduce? And, and when we take these psychedelics, it maybe breaks that filter so we can see what's really here. Are our perceptions, our smell, our sight, is that just a filter? Who, we'll never know. It felt real, but we'll never know. I considered myself agnostic before that. And it took me, this is about a year and a half ago when, when, when that happened. And I've been slowly realizing that, like, there, there's probably something else. And I probably saw it. And I can reject it and I can feel, I can feel... Uh, I guess I, I think I have a bit of shame in the sense that I guess I've been painted with this idea that like Christianity, the religion I grew up with is bad and it's like shallow minded and it's not, it's not something that I want to be into. Right. Um, most people you see are like devout Christians are, aren't painted always in the best light, mm -hmm. uh, I guess sometimes in culture. Right. Or there seem to be like, they don't understand the world. But I'm starting to believe that after, again, visiting all these tribes and seeing how every culture has a spiritual practice, how man needs some purpose, some reason why we're here, that if you don't have a relationship with whatever that was, it's a very lonely existence. Because mm. you see all these people in prison who they get into God and they become religious because you're alone. But if you have belief that there is a higher power out there, it could be nature, it could be the universe, it could be God, then you're never alone. And you can give you hope to get through the day. And if you are depressed or suicidal and you think no one cares, someone cares, right? And I've begun to understand that maybe man should have a relationship with God, whatever that is, a relationship with, again, I feel God is, is so, has so much pre like cultural bull attached to it, but yeah. just a relationship with the universe. Yeah. Right. That everything happens for a reason that there's always a lesson to be learned that while there might be some giant challenges thrown at you, they're there for a reason if you choose to live that way. And if you choose to believe that everything happens for a reason, it does. It does. It will yeah. because you'll find the reason. So it, it took a long time to digest that, man. And even now I, I still have these like almost like 
flashbacks of just boof, like a glitch in the matrix where it's like not in like a psychotic sort of way but just in a like what is this reality sort of way 